Welcome back to the introduction to matinee. In this video, we are going to animate the light effect that is associated with our door. And by that, I mean we're going to take this red light, we're going to make it turn green when the door is opening, and then turn red again when the door is closing back. Of course, to make sure that the effect looks right, we need to make sure that the material that is assigned to our static mesh, that light fixture, changes from red to green and then back to red so that it follows along with the light. That's right. So we're going to be controlling two different things. We're going to be controlling lights and we're going to be controlling a material. That's right. If you want to get technical, we're actually controlling three things, two lights and one material. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so uh, let's pop off into Kismet first thing, and I'm going to open up the door sequence. We're going to add this light effect into our door sequence. We don't really want to create this in a separate animated sequence because that might make it tricky to diagnose any problems later on. I mean, we could do that, but think about it. If somebody comes behind you and tries to edit your level, and let's say they need to add something into this effect for the door, well, it could become very difficult to find where you've got everything at if you've got different matinee sequence objects all over the place controlling different parts of the effect. So it's just a good idea to keep everything grouped into this one particular matinee. Well, not to mention it makes things easier. I mean, if we know, for example, we want the light to toggle right when the door is halfway open You've got all the keyframes you can line up with. That's right. We're all set to go. That's right. So let's pop into the matinee sequence and open up the matinee editor. I'm going to minimize... Kismet down in the corner, so let's uh, see if I can remember to uh, open that up later. Now, the first thing I want to do is bring in our light. That's the very first thing I'm going to animate is actually one of our dynamic lights. So I'll select that here inside the viewport. I'm going to right-click here inside my group track list and create a new empty group, and we will call this door light. And now, what I like to do is always confirm that I did, in fact, get a new group and that my object was connected to it. So there we go. We can see that point light toggleable 28 was attached to the door light group. That's perfect. So let's minimize Kismet again. Now, what is it we want to animate? I'm gonna, here, let me move my camera around so we can kind of see a little bit of everything. What we're going to be animating is the color of this light. Now, it just so happens that uh, on the, in this group, if I right-click, we have a new color property track, which is specifically designed for just this task. So let's go ahead and click on this, and we get a new property name, and it immediately knows that this guy has a light color property, which is exactly what we want. So we'll go ahead and click OK. So with that, we're set to go, but something just happened, and it's... It's just kind of the nature of the beast. There's nothing you can do about it. But when I added this light color track, what happened to my light? If you take a close look, it has uh, darkened out to black. Now, you might still see a little bit of uh, remnant red light in there, but that is because we still have red light coming through from the other side. This light has switched completely over to black because we have no keyframe information on it. So what I'm going to do is, with, here with my time slider here at the uh, very beginning of the track, we'll go ahead and place a key. And now let's right-click on this key, and notice we get the set color option. We'll click on this, and you can see we it's set to black. black. Yeah, <laughs> there's no value there. So we'll set this over to red, and I'll make this a slightly desaturated red, and click OK, and there we go. So now we have this value of red at the very beginning of our animation. Now what I'm going to do is scrub forward a bit to halfway along our sequence. So let me zoom out a little bit to make the most of my uh, animation. We'll go to, let's see, if we're doing one second, we'll go to about the uh, 0.5 mark. Ooh, nice job, Zach. And we'll go ahead and create a new key. And I'll right-click on it again to set the color, and this time we'll choose a shade of green. So there we go. Now the light is green. In fact, maybe just because I'm picky, we're going to make it a slightly more brilliant green. Uh, I don't know why. It just made me happier. So now our light is changing, but there's a bit of a problem, and that is that we are blending that color. Which in itself is not really that big of a deal. In fact, if we wanted to, we could take our initial keyframe, hold control, and we could drag it really close to our next keyframe, and that is going to cause, just if we play back at normal speed... It looks like it blinks. It's, yeah, it's very blink-like, but it is, in fact, not a blink. In fact, here, let's go ahead and turn on a loop. But it's, uh, if you look really carefully, you can just start to see it. Yeah, you can just see that little blend point taking place, and we don't want that. We want this to immediately change. Now, in order to do that, we can change the keyframe type that we're using. So let's open up the Curve Editor, and I need to send this light color curve up into my Curve Editor, and finally I get to use this little scroll bar. I'm so excited. So let's go ahead and send this up, and just, just to drive home various points, before I even send this up, we're going to create a new Curve tab, and I'll call this uh, Light color. We'll press enter, and now we'll send this curve up. So now we've got this stored inside of a tab for organization later. Now this is going to be real easy to do. I'm going to hold down control and alt, 
and select all of these keys, and I'm just going to set these all to constant curves. So an instant change is going to occur. That's right. So we're holding this value right up to the 0.5 mark, and then, boom, we're going to immediately shift over to green. So let's give that a quick test with our loop playback. Bink. We jump right over to green. Very nice. All right, now that's only half the battle in terms of our animated lights, though we are done with matinee. We can go ahead and close that for the time being. Let's get back into Unreal Kismet, and now we need to attach our other light to the sequence. So we'll get this out of the way for just a moment, and I'll run through the wall real quick. Let's grab this light. Now I'll just get back over here because this is where I was working. I don't know why. It just makes me feel better. And uh, let's go into Kismet. I'll right-click and choose New Object Variable using Point Light Toggleable 29, which I will then just attach like so. Now, just for my own purposes and sanity, I'm going to kind of reorganize a few things here. Just kind of start grouping stuff together so it doesn't get too stretched out. So now both of these lights are being affected by the Kismet sequence. It would be a good idea to double-check and see how well this is playing so let's go ahead and play a loop. And we can see that both lights are now changing from red to green. That's right, which is half of our, uh, our whole effect battle. We need the lights to change color, that is true. But now, more importantly, we need these fixtures to change as well. Right. So let's go ahead and get out of matinee for just a moment, because we have a problem. There is no way that matinee can talk to this material instance constant while it's sitting in the browser. There's no, like, grab, uh, ma grab the material in the browser and animate it sort of group or track that we can create. Instead, we need an actor that can work as a go-between. And that actor is called the Material Instance Actor. So let's go ahead and open up the Actor Class Browser. And this guy's located right here at the very surface underneath Actor. There's Material Instance Actor right there. We'll close down the Actor Class Browser. And you can place this guy anywhere in the level, though in general, it is a good idea to keep him close by to the effect that you're creating just so that you don't get too confused later on. So I'll kind of push him over here into the corner. Now, we have some things we need to set up on this Actor. So let's double-click it. And it's looking for a particular material instance to talk to. So let's open up the generic browser. We'll select our matte const fluorescent light, close out, and we'll apply this. And while we're here, it would be a good idea just to make sure that we have saved this package. So make sure you do that if you haven't at, uh, at this point already. We'll go ahead and close down the generic browser. We'll close down the material instance actor. And now this actor can be affected by way of matinee. So we're, we're still affecting the material, but we're using this guy as a go-between to get the job done. So let's go back into Kismet. Let's open up Matinee. Now, just, I like to confirm everything, so let's make sure we still have this material instance actor selected. I'll get rid of the curve editor for the time being. I'm going to right-click and create a new empty group, and I will call this um, Light Fixture Color. There we go. Now, again, I still love to confirm stuff, so let's go back over, and there we go. Material Instance Actor 1, and he is plugged right into our new group. That's exactly what we want to see. Okay, so now to make things easy on ourselves, I'm going to place my keyframes. Well, actually, I can't place any keyframes yet. I need a track. I need a track. There's a few things we need, actually. Yeah, well, let's just start simple with a track. I'm going to right-click on our light fixture group, and what we're going to have to create is a material parameter track. So let's go ahead and create, I'm sorry, vector material parameter track. Because <laughs> there's a few different ones. We don't, we're not doing a float, we're doing a vector. That's right. So let's go ahead and select that. And here we go. Now there's a, a catch to this, and there's a problem that we can't solve currently here inside the matinee window, and that's because we don't have our properties available. So when we open up our properties window, you'll notice that this particular track is looking for a parameter name. That's right. You've got to make sure you use these names. So let's uh, choose light color. Now, notice I typed that in all lowercase, and it did get capitalized, so Unreal was able to find something and uh, get it all connected up. Remember earlier, Zach said that parameter name was going to become critical when we got over into matinee, and this is what he's talking and about. This is where it is officially critical. So I think now we are officially ready to start keyframing. Yes. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to do something kind of special. We're going to click on this keyframe that I've already created, which jumps us directly to point four, and then I'll click back on my vector uh, material parameter track, and then press enter. So I'm creating a key here. And now this is where things get a little bit tricky. Because if I right-click on this guy, notice I have no way to set his value. Mm -hmm. His value has to be set entirely within the curve editor. So that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and open up the curve editor, and I need a little more real estate space here. So let's scroll down a bit. I'm going to send my vector parameter track. Now, what tabs do I have up here? I have light color. Let's just go ahead and make a new one for light fixture color. 
and we'll send that up. So I'm keeping these nice and organized in case I need to adjust them later for any reason. Now I have my first key, and notice that all of my keys are set to zero, so they're all stacked on top of each other. And there are three keys here because we're dealing with an RGB value. Oh, we can confirm it real quick. If I turn off all but uh, the red channel, you can still see a key, and then I can turn all off but, uh, but green, and then all off but blue. That's right. So they're all there, but they're all right on top of one another. And what I need are the RGB values for uh, the color red that we want this to be. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know those values off the top of my head. So what I'm going to do is open up the generic browser, and we will double-click on our material instance constant to bring up this little uh, window that we saw earlier. Now, currently, this guy is set to black. That's because our keyframes are set to black. So I'm going right. to expand this guy, and let's reset the value to its default. Remember that little button? And now we can expand, and we get some values. So I'm going to take just a second and jot these down. So I have a red value of 1. I have a green value, and I'm going to round just a little bit, of zero po four. Uh, point zero 0.04. And then I have a blue value of what? Point zero 0.04. Uh, point zero 0.04 again. Wow, look at me go with the values. Okay, now, while I'm here, let's go ahead and get a green value that I can use as well. Sounds good. So I'll grab my color picker. Let's choose some shade of green, and I used something that was a little more brilliant than just uh, slightly desaturated. So I'll click OK. Whoa! <laughs> maybe, okay, maybe a little less green. That is brilliant, all right. A little less green. Okay, that's a little bit too uh, not brilliant enough, so we're going to have to find some happy middle ground. Because I want a little bit of green tinge in there. I don't want it to wash out to complete white. Uh, it's starting to turn a little bit yellow. We're getting there. But the, here's the, you know, this is kind of showing the importance of doing this anyway. I can go with that. I think that'll work. Okay. So, uh, now, check this out. These numbers did not update for us. Also, and this is, I'm sorry, that big gold or green sphere. It's just blinding. Yeah, it's kind of scary. So oh, that's <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit uh, less frightening. Now, notice these numbers did not update. They still, still show. mostly yeah. red, yeah. So, go ahead and close this and expand it back out, and then it's they will like update. It's like magic. So uh, and now we have red. 0.05. Oh, cool. You're going to read them off for me. That's fabulous. Green is a value of 1, mm -hmm. and blue is a value of 0 0.02. 0 0.02. Excellent. So now, armed with that information, we are ready to go forth and set up our keyframes. So we'll close off the generic browser. We'll come up here to this window. I'm going to do this one color at a time. So we'll close off blue. We'll shut off uh, green. And we're just going to have red. I'm going to right-click on this key and set its value. And the value here was, of course, just 1 for red. Now let's turn off red. Let's make sure we can see everybody. We're going to turn off red, and we will turn on green. And we'll right-click and set value again. And uh, what do we have? We have 0 .04. And there we go. And now we'll turn off green and turn on blue. And 0 .04 again. Yep. Uh, 0 .04 a second time. And there we go. So that first color is set. We can go ahead and turn all three of our keys back on if we want to. Now what I'm going to do is click over on the second keyframe jump back down to my vector material parameter track, and press enter a second time. So now the timing of these keys is coinciding perfectly. Now we need to do the exact same thing and set up our colors, so we'll switch off blue, we'll switch off green once again, we'll start off by setting our red value, which is 0 .05, so again, we'll right-click, set value to 0 .05. Let's go ahead and switch over to green, right-click on our key, set value, and this will be, uh, what is that, 1? And then we need to switch over to blue, right-click, set value, point zero and this will be 0 .02. There we go. So now we can show everybody, and you can see the transition. The only problem we have left is that, once again, we are blending. So I'm going to hold down Control and Alt and grab all of our keys, and we're going to set these all to constant. So now we are shifting directly from one color to another over uh, absolutely no time whatsoever. So let's close. Well, before we close that, I guess we should test this out. So uh, let's see. Let's do a quick loop. Hey, hey. Looks like it's working. Yes, it does. Looking pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and close out of matinee, and uh, let's take a look over inside of Kismet. Is there anything else that we really need to do? I think we're good to go. I think so. I think we need to just test this out in the game. It's like uh, usually when it gets done and it was that easy, I get scared. So uh, let's right-click and play from here. And that looks interesting because that's, that's black when we first come in. So we need to double-check our uh, values and there's the, uh, it looks like it just might not be updating when we come in, and I'll bet I can tell you what this problem is. And I'll bet you, when we uh, restart the level, it's gonna, it might end up being black again. 
I'm willing to bet you it's going to be not, red. It's going to be red. Yep. Yeah, and you're right. It's going to be red. Uh, if This is probably just because it turned black when those initial keys, but something you might want to check is to pop into the generic browser and just make sure that the default value inside your material instance constant is, in fact, still red, because I have seen that get set to other values before while you're playing around. But it looks like it was just an updating thing. Mm-hmm. So, with that, we have finished off our color effect for our light. Let's jump back in game one more time, and now let's actually focus on the effect. Yeah, so, so it's red, putting off some red illumination. Putting off green illumination, looks great. It's all nice and green. We step away from it. Everything turns red, and the light turns red, too. And just for the fun of it, just to really drive it home, make it look good, let's turn the lights off. Very nice. Oh, yeah, so that's working out great. And really, that's everything we wanted to show in this video, which was just animating a, a special effect, if you will, using matinee. And we're, a, we're using this to animate the color of a light and the color of a material vector parameter. And that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.